Hello Rat Bags, it's Jade. Welcome to another Outer Worlds tutorial. Today I am showing you everything you need to know about workbenches. You'll come across workbenches all around the map and the world and on your own spaceship. Highlighted by this symbol here, they're not too hard to find. The benefits of workbenches are indeed fantastic. Not only can you modify your weapons, you can add base stats increases to them, repair them at a cheaper cost and get more resources back whenever you break any items down. That is, if you do have the engineering perk of level 20, field repair, you can repair weapons and armor in the inventory. If you don't have that, you're gonna have to wait every time until you find one of these workbenches. So I highly recommend you do increase the skills in that engineering skill. Anyway, let's dive deeper into what you can actually do. Modifications are pretty simple. Click on the weapon or the item that you want to modify, bearing in mind that you cannot modify special weapons like these. Anything with a yellow background with the stripes, they are special weapons and so you can't modify them. Let's take our shotgun here and hopefully by now you've gathered some of these modifications. Now shotguns actually only have one slot for you to put a modification in and you can see I've already got one equipped which is plasma so that changes the damage type to that element. I could change the damage type to shock or I can increase the magazine size by 50%. If we take a look at our pistol, there's two ways to improve this. You can have different muzzles, or again, you can still apply them same magazine modifications to a pistol too. You'll find that lots of modifications can be used across all weapons. Now this is all pretty self-explanatory, and once you get a handle of it, you'll pretty much be swapping in and out all the modifications and trying them out. But you do lose them when you swap them over, so whatever old modifications in the weapon, it will be gone. So modifications are definitely something you want to be getting hold of as much as possible. Buying them from vendors, and also trying to find perks and ways to get more of them. You'll often come across enemies that really don't take as much damage as they should, unless the weapon is a plasma or a shock element charged weapon. So make sure you've got a few of these mods always spare, just in case you need to swap out. With your companion at perk tier level 2, for Pavati at least anyway, you've got a 10% chance to extract mods in the field. So I highly recommend that when you get the chance, you go for that. It's just going to increase how many mods you get while in combat and fighting. Another one that you want to seriously consider investing in is hack. By increasing your stealth overall, get it to level 50, and for hack it's only level 40 and you get the bonus of competent. This is gonna unlock access to restricted items in the vending machines, and you'll see that a lot of them restricted items are much higher, better mods. After that, it's the tech skills that you really wanna be putting skill points in if you wanna focus on mods and get the most out of them. The science skill, the bonus at level 20, improves your weapon and armor in the workbench. At level 40, the tinkering cost is reduced by 50%. And if you look at engineering, when you break down weapons and armor, you'll also get a 10% chance to extract a rare mod at level 80. So this is gonna be a little bit further away, but if you have been collecting mods and you really haven't seen too many uses of them or don't seem to be getting the most out of them, sink some points into tech and definitely go for the hack and see if that increases the types of mods you get. So hopefully they'll be a little bit more sexy for you. There are some other good ones maybe to have as well if you're gonna be buying mods, particularly from vending machines. Perks, 20% off the vendor prices at tier one. And again, the same thing, another 20% off at tier two. So you get the idea. We've spoken about what some of the best skills and best perks are to have while trying to get the most out of the modifications. I'm gonna go ahead and modify my security blade with a sure grip. So now I've got an extra 25% durability. So the weapons are pretty much self-explanatory. Lots of the mods will work across all of them. It just depends on what weapon it is, what can be upgradable, and what either elemental damage you want to do, or increasing magazines or putting scopes in them. Armor pieces work slightly differently in that there are more slots for you to modify. They're breaking down into armoring, gadget, skill kit, and utility. On the right hand side it lists exactly what mod is equipped and it also shows you what stats you'll get when you equip a brand new mod. Let's go ahead and put this one on and there you are, I've added the electro charge service. I'm also going to add this backpack mod which is going to give me an increase of 20 kg. Tinkering pretty much just increases the base damage for any weapon piece or armor stats. I really love my old reliable LMG. I can increase its damage by an extra 2% and it really doesn't cost that much, only 59 bits. Each time you upgrade though, it does start getting more and more expensive. 
but this is a great way to stop your weapons becoming irrelevant. You can simply level them up. No longer deciding what guns to get rid of, just simply make sure you get enough bits and you can keep that gun all the way through your playthrough. This works particularly well on these special weapons that often have special elemental attacks or statuses with them. It's exactly the same for armor. You can go ahead and increase it individually by small amounts, but nevertheless, it does mean that your armor can go with you through your journey. Now you can repair items. Obviously I haven't got anything to repair right now, but when you do it at a crafting bench, it's actually cheaper. So if you have unlocked that perk that allows you to repair or break down items out in the wilds, where you can try and do it still on the workbench so that you get more resources back or when repairing, it doesn't cost as much. Just broke down that gun. I've got four weapon parts and a Mr. Ouch. And that is how you get the most out of your workbench. Also a top tip pretty much related. If you're a dirty hoarder, you can actually store some of your items on your ship. You can go ahead and transfer any of your items that you've got into your fridge or your other containers. This is definitely worth doing if you've started gathering a lot of mods, but you want to keep them until you unlock and maybe a better weapon. Or there's an armor piece that you'll know go really well with a specific mod, but you can't access that mod just yet until you've unlocked more levels or you've been able to get enough bits to buy it. Top note as well, you do get some mods back when you break down items, but not always guaranteed. Obviously when you break stuff down, you get your armor parts, which you can see how many you've got of. Likewise, your weapon parts there too. I hope that's been useful. Just a little walk through the workbench, basically reminding you guys to use it as much as possible and definitely go ahead and equip as many mods as you can for your weapons. Try not to hold or save them too long. You'll often get the chance to buy some backup vending machines. They really can help you out and change the way that you're playing. Likewise, with the right skills and perks, you can make the most out of tinkering, repairing, and breaking down your items. Go and check out all my other Outer Worlds tutorials and go and give me a follow on Mixer where I'm live streaming this game a lot more. Links for that will be in the description box down below. Until then, I'll see you rat bags later.